so like just starting from the idea of the boat as a public limited company and then and, and then you have a captain who sets the North Star where you're going and then he needs to get together a team and, and, and that team needs to know what they're doing, have the skills, but also that I think they have to all be very much aligned with, yep. with the destination and agreeing yep. where the destination is and yep. that that's where they want to be. Yep. I am here now in beautiful Grunenhaka with Richard von Kaufmann. How are you, Richard? Very good, thanks. Can't complain. Both. No, it's a perfect day. Now tell me, why have you brought me here? Where are we exactly? Well, in, in the Walk and Talk series, yeah, you like to be people to talk about their favorite places. Yes. And sailing around Helsinki City is my favorite place, kind of in the city. Um, as you see, we're just a like, couple of minutes walk from the city edge and yeah. we have a, a public boat space that makes it really affordable for normal people, average people, to keep a boat, <laughs> unlike many countries in, in the world. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, for me, when I first moved here, I always assumed boating was for the posh. And I didn't realize it was accessible to everyone. Uh, absolutely. I mean, you can get a sailboat in Finland, three, four thousand euros, like ours. Um, you can dock it here for just under 300 euros. Amazing. So like, everybody has their hobbies and relatively and, and especially if you're like us, we share our boat with friends. Friends we really like to go sailing with. One's the godmother of our kids, so that makes it even less expensive. We split the cost wow. between everybody. Never occurred um, to me that you could share a boat, like share the ownership of a boat. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the trick is, to, as I say, to share it with people who, who you like to sail with, <laughs> and then it's not really sharing, is it? Because no. actually the thing about sailing is you actually need other people i mean it's quite difficult to sail by yourself it's, you need a lot of uh, okay, practice and skill i didn't realize that too so here we are oh this is here she is uh, ermelinda what's she called uh, ermelinda ermelinda <laughs> with boats you never change the name it's really bad luck oh actually right. the previous owners we bought this from uh changed the name of their previous boat and they got hit by a speedboat and, and got totally smashed so oh my god <laughs> We should never be superstitious, but in that case, changing the name really did bring some bad luck. So, yeah, you stick with the name. I think this is the end of the walk and talk. Now we're going to sail and talk. Let's do this. Okay, so how essential are these life jackets? Should I be worried? Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> technically it's impossible for a sailing boat to actually capsize because uh, as, as it leans over the wind spills, so fingers crossed we've, we've never seen it. Heard of. The most uh, common time people die or drown is, oh my God, when <laughs> is if they're drunk and they try and have a piss over the side of the boat ah, yes. and then they fall in. That's the classic, the classic Finnish way uh, to go. To go. Well, I don't think we're planning to get drunk. So and we haven't changed the name of the boat. Uh, so yeah, so we should be good. <laughs> Ready to rock. Yeah, so that one is will just inflate. Automatically you fall in the water. Well, I'm planning on not inflating <laughs> this. Sounds okay. We will switch to sails when we're out there so it'll be quieter. Alright, so heading out to sea. Sail up. Okay. Because I have to go into wind. You have to go into wind to get the sail up. It's just it won't take a second. Okay. So you, you see that arrow up there, the black arrow? Yeah. The wind vane, that tells you where the wind is going from. So to get the main sail up, this one here, we have to go directly into the wind. Ah. Uh, otherwise, the wind tries to blow it on the wrong direction. Always the ropes go around clockwise. And uh, set this one out a bit. Now we can feel that 
engine. Let's put it into petrol. Now we're sailing. Yeah, we just the, this, well, when we get out of the shadow of the Derbasari Island, the wind will pick up a bit. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Yeah, one thing I learned, I'm sure other non-sailors will be surprised to hear this. It's actually possible for people, sailboats, to be stuck in, out in the sea, in the ocean, if there's no wind, forever. Yeah. Theoretically. Theoretically. Uh, but that's why we have engines, generally. Yeah, but in the old yeah. days, before... Oh, in the old days, yeah, that's true. Like, old, I never days. thought about that. Like, um, the possibility of just being stuck with no wind stuck in, in, the, in the doldrums yes the doldrums that's what i've heard that phrase but i never really knew what the doldrums were until i looked into this it's fascinating isn't that isn't that theoretically possible if this engine were to fail in modern sailboats uh yeah I, then what are you supposed to do well we have mobile phones yes. <laughs> so <laughs> call the the rescue people okay i guess Hat on. It's sunnier, much sunnier than I thought. This is sort of the last part of the sail sailing season. Um, yeah, this is. I mean, now we're in September and we're still sailing. So, let me ask you about price tap. What is price tap? So, price tap, my startup, is a, a solution that lets retailers sell stuff uh, when there isn't staff around so that could be in the shop window at a festival and an event so people how it works is people come with their smartphone they scan or tap the price tag or the or some code and it brings the item into the phone then they can see what are the available colors what are the available sizes they can add it to a wish list and if they're lucky they can see there's a hidden discount so we provide also a solution for the retailers to uh, kind of dynamically control the prices remotely mm. how does one learn sailing uh, that's actually one of the most beautiful things and amazing things about sailing in the modern age that you don't have to have any license uh, you just take a <laughs> boat and <t> <laughs> it's up to you it's amazing in this day and age of regulation uh, this is one reason this is one place the, the regulations don't reach yeah I mean of course there are some regulations around uh, being too drunk, drinking too much, but in terms of this, absolutely no restriction. So my 14-year-old kid could come with his friend and sail this boat. Wow! So I, I really hope that it's kind of the last of the wild parts of mo like modern life, where it's kind of free for all, and you can uh, you can make some decisions on your own. Yeah, uh, enjoy nature. But yeah, in terms of learning to sail, like we uh, we did a course in uh, Scotland just to get the basics because we were going back to UK because obviously I'm from the UK um, and, and that was it and then you just kind of pick, actually you pick up a lot from friends just constantly talking with friends yeah well that's what I've started to do I'm on a mission uh, to get a boat in 2021 mm -hmm. that's my that's my goal yeah I think if you're going to own a boat any time in your life while you're in Finland that's the time to do it mm. here I see people just casually going sailing they rent you can rent a boat just mm. like you rent mm. a car Mm. And there's this even this skipper uh, skippery. Exactly. You can, we, I only we, we recently that found summer. that. 
you can rent any kind of size boat on that. I know. It's like Airbnb for boats. And yes. we did that over the summer actually, because we needed, we went with friends, we went a bit further in the Tur Turkish Ar Turku Archipelago, which is a super stunning part of Finland. Yeah. Uh, it's too far to get to on this boat now. Uh, but so we hired a little bit bigger boat for a week. Did it was, you? It was this summer, it was amazing. I'd love to do uh, that. And you don't need a license or anything? No, that was the, that's the amazing thing. I, I, it's quite, it must be quite scary with people renting their boats. They just, you just <laughs> trust what they, that you know what you're doing. I think it, it sounds crazy, but I think like majority of the time, reasonably sane people exactly. are going to be too scared to take a boat out exactly. <laughs> if they don't kind of have a reasonably good feeling of, of knowing what they're supposed to be doing. So and it's, it's sort just of self-protecting in that sense. Especially, mm. you know, because it's not like fast-paced hedonistic fun. Mm. So irresponsible people are not going to be drawn to this. Sailing, I suppose. Actually, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, no, sailing in particular. But yeah, certainly with a big powerful motorboat, you can ha have instant uh, chaos if you <laughs> but but most people wouldn't want to get stuck out and sea in a sailing boat not knowing what to do yeah uh, if they didn't have so it's self-protecting in that sense but of course there's always some people who maybe overestimate their capabilities and <laughs> but they, they but they, those uh, boat renting services they like Airbnb they have ratings and stuff yeah so yep. you earn yeah. reputation yeah. Let's talk about your Medium article that you recently shared with me. I, I really enjoyed reading it because you made a um, comparison, the life of a startup or sailing as a metaphor for the, for the journey of a startup. Yeah. Where did that come from? Where well, did the idea I, of the article? I generally I quite like metaphors and, and sort of mental models generally, but just I think what the main thing that started that metaphor was this idea that quite often any kind of business but like particularly startup you can't usually go directly where you want to be uh, you have to go like maybe tack in one direction and set up a, like capture one small thing here and then go here and here even though you have this kind of grand ambition uh, you have to start somewhere very uh, some, so somewhere attainable so you have to kind of Attack there. That yeah. was the kind of starting idea. But then many, many other metaphors came. Uh, yeah. Thing. So I like, just started from the idea of the boat as a public limited company, and then, and, and then you have a captain who sets the north star where you're going, and then he needs to get together a team, and and, and that team needs to know what they're doing, have the skills, but also that I think they have to all be very much aligned with, yep. with the destination and agreeing yep. where the destination is, and yep. that that's where they want to be. It sounds <laughs> but obvious, but not everybody yeah, yeah, no, that is yeah. able to align in the startup world. It's, to be honest, it's one of the biggest learnings I've ever had in a startup is that you, you really got to make sure that the sort of, because everybody has their own North Star, their own yes. thing they want to do, and uh, things work best when the journey of the, of the boat matches their, their journey yeah. uh, for as long as possible. I mean, I think ultimately some people might reach where they want to get earlier, and it, but if it's too soon and they're not aligned anymore, you've lost them. It doesn't matter how much money you're paying them or, or whatever. You, you, they've got to stay aligned and I think that's one of the hardest things to, to actually be careful about recruiting that we, what are the people's fundamental like motivations for, for being part of that startup journey and where do they want to get to uh, in their own lives yeah. regardless of, of the startup and the thing and the thing that I found is sometimes it's not that it's not that they are going in different directions as such it's that they haven't verbally expressed it. They haven't articulated it. So they think they're all aligned. Mm, mm. I've, I see that a lot. Where... Yeah, that's really oh shit. Yeah, that's uh, very unusual. I've never seen that before. There's a giant tanker coming this way. And he just gave us a big boom, so we have to get the hell out of his way. Richard is trying to start the engine. This 
this is slightly scary for a first timer like me, but Richard is super calm. We have a captain. I mean, look, it's miles away. It's an unusual boat. I don't know that one at all. It's not a ferry. It's very unusual. It looks like some kind of construction boat. And thank God for the engine that works. Yeah, I can do it. I can put it off already, actually. That thing is huge. Yeah, it's powered. That's it. Is. Um, that means it's, it's funny. There's not much wind now, but this year it's been very windy overall. I have to say, this is quite scary. Having this thing pass so close, this giant thing. I'm not sure how much it shows on camera, but it's, it's huge. It's actually just, I just wanted to, I actually planned it so you could have a little bit of yeah, get drama. A <laughs> so, yeah, so let's continue with what we were saying with Metzfar. Um I'll just finish the point that I was making before. Uh, in terms of different members being aligned, it's not so much that everybody's going in different directions, or they are, but they, they haven't, because they haven't articulated the North Star, like you said, the captain's North Star, clearly, mm. Mm. everybody thinks they're aligned. Mm. Right, so for me, from what I've witnessed, it's the lack of clear verbalization of the direction. From both sides, you mean, I think. I suppose so, but it has to start from the captain. Yeah, the captain has to. Right, the captain clearly. has to clearly be able mm. to express the what the heck it is we're doing. Yeah, the destination we want to be eventually. Yeah. And the steps we're going to take to get yes. there. I think, I think, yeah, that's quite interesting. It's a very challenging setting, the North Star. I mean, I think in startup language they talk about a North Star is usually defined in terms of a key metric that if this thing is happening and the more it's happening you kind of know you're, you're, you're in the right direction. Um, so in our case initially that is like facilitated sales that we're, we're facilitating these remote sales and, and as long as the sales going up that's one core metric because if we, if we, if we achieve that uh, and that North Star metric of this facility sales goes up, then we can do all kinds of really cool, impactful stuff. Mm. But I mean, talking about alignment, I think sometimes um, it's, it's challenging because you might have, let's say, a person on your team <laughs> um, who's very open about what they want to achieve in terms of developing some skills and some experience. and. In a way, they almost don't care about the sort of bigger picture of what you're doing, as long as they can improve their own skills, uh, co whatever, coding skills, uh, and they have a vehicle to do that. The challenge there is, and that's fine, and, and it can be very transparent, and it fits with your, your line, but there comes a point where they feel that they've achieved whatever they want to achieve, uh, and then, they, then you start to lose them, because they, they weren't aligned with the sort of more bigger sort of ideological goals in a sense uh, or aims or, or uh, obsessed with becoming a big company a really successful company they have their their goals are sort of uh, their size of the ambition of their goals is misaligned in that sense but yeah I mean I, I think if you're, ser if you're really serious about and this is really hard for young people uh, if you really serious about startup, you have to mentally really ask yourself if things go reasonably well. I mean, by reasonably, there's going to be huge struggle. There's going to be the valley of death in, in the second, third year, and where it looks like everything's never going to work. But as long as you can keep going and, and it's not total failure, you should be will willing to put 10 years of your life into a startup, a proper startup.
All right, we have safely docked. Getting ready to disembark. It was a surprisingly warm and sunny yes. September day. It's surprisingly warm. Sunny now we're out again. Thank you for a beautiful yeah. boat ride, Richard. Thank you for the opportunity to let me rabbit on about <laughs> things that I am passionate about. Yes. Uh, and it's dangerous. Let's do this again soon. <laughs> 